you have double buff at 2 minute 18 you're so in advance how's it going everyone zonobra here coming at you with another video another episode of moose actually and today we're gonna comment a new move that i find out on reddit league of legend that happened in eulcs for me it's hard to catch eulcs because i live in california and the hours are really hard to follow but I always go to Reddit, try to get the good plays, and try to shoutcast it, analyze it for you guys. And this one here is special. So it's G2 versus Vitaly. Vitaly is winning 1-0 to zero in terms of game, and the game just barely started, right? And as you see here on the screenshot, you have a Kalista and Alistair against the blue. And you're like, what the hell is going on? Where's the jungle? Where's the jungle? Whatever. And the jungle is right here, actually. It's Maokai, uh, played by Joko. Why this clip is interesting is that, as well as this looks like a leash or like something that is very special and that we don't see often, this is one of the smartest moves I've seen in a while in terms of jungle and in terms of like breaking the the pattern of what we used to see in the jungle routes and all that stuff. So let's just watch the clip one time and then come back to it and just analyze it a little bit more. To build for this team. So you see like Vendor and Stillback here are just doing the blue buff, like they're alone, nobody lists to them, they're not necessarily super late, and then, boom, the Maokai picks me, is taking the blue buff, giving it to Maokai cross map like that, let me just lower the volume, uh, but basically Joko is allow, is able to do the, the little res here, like the little camp here, plus the red buff, while getting a blue buff, which means that at 2 minute and 18, he's able to get the two buffs while Sejuani is literally just moving to her second buffs. So why is this interesting? This is super interesting because, as you know guys, in a, in a pro game environment, there's a lot of pattern. Like, we see a lot of the same things over and over. And usually, if you're a top laner, you're, you're used to seeing your the enemy jungle coming around... 3 minute, 3 minute 30. This is like the zone. Uh, 3 minute is usually when a top laner will start to ward his bush. Uh, just in case he has to push. Or like he will just ward here just to get some vision. Because he knows that a jungle will get two buffs. And the route goes from south to north. And the closest lane is the top lane, right? But this gives him an advantage in time. That unfortunately I don't know if it translated to a first blood or something because I just have this clip to work with. All right, so I managed to find a replay of the game. Uh, this is a little bit after my recording of the video, and this is Malachi trying to go mid. As I told you in the recording, so we're two minutes and twenty-two. The top is pushing, as I told you earlier, and mid lane is pushing towards this Vitali side. So we'll see what Joko is gonna do after this. We'll see if he gets first blood or at least a flash. Pushing up. This is okay, so he's coming. Well, let me show the volume. So, Burks has no idea what's going on right now. Like, it's there's no way there's a jungle coming in. And okay, they're not gonna get the kill. Sejuani is here. Sejuani is here, right here with just the red buff, guys. And he's like, "What the fuck? What happened? Why is Malakai double buff right now?" So they get the. Um, they do get double summer spell on perks, uh, being the ghost and the flash, which obviously gives you a huge advantage. Let's just see if uh, Syndra ends up dying very soon after, or she will have time to get her, her buff back. I just want to see that because it's important. So, okay, so Syndra got her buff back, the shield she didn't die, which means that they didn't capitalize on the advantage they got from this whole action in the jungle. But still, like, Having the mid force flash can allow to some opportunities and stuff. Well, they, they couldn't do it in this game, but it's still something that could happen. Let's just see what really happened. So first of all, you have to know that you can't really do this with any support or any like ADC. This is an Alistair, a, ch a champion that can heal, a champion that has a really nice passive, and it's a Kalista which stacks arrows and does a lot of damage at, at some point when uh, the E is procced or just used. So this is for me, I think one of the best situation to do this little thing, uh, this little like play I want to say. Uh, I don't think you can do it with like anyone, I don't think you can do it with like a Thresh Israel, for example, I don't think you can do it with 
every comp. This is not the only comp you can do it to, but I think this is one of the safest because you have to understand that they're going back straight to lane to farm the minions that are already attacking themselves here, so they're losing a little bit of time. But they have to be like yeah they have to be safe like they can't use a lot of potion i don't think they can use any potions to be honest uh alistair maybe used one potion but i'm not sure i'm not entirely sure for now um but yeah if they don't want to be dominated by the various uh brahm they, they have to not come back in line with like half hp or like alistair with like uh 50 percent hp off so it has to be worth it this is so worth it because okay so let's just get back into light. So they bring it to like 200 HP, and then the picks me here, which is like which lasts one minute, I think, is just gonna pop it and kill it. Note that Maokai, when he picks a picks me now in bushes, it does additional damage. Uh, so 200 damage is probably what it's for. So 250 damage. Well, sorry about that. Uh, so it's enough to secure like the the buff, and then he's gonna do red buff easily. Look at that. He has seven farm. He has 7 farm, while the Sejuani has 1 with the red buff he just got. So just look at 2 minutes 05 where people are. Like Sejuani is right here doing her second camp where Melkai already did the first one and it's almost going to finish with the second one. Uh, this is pretty crazy man. And Melkai is a really good jungle as well. With the rework, the clean is so much easier, like the picks me can... Uh, picks me turns into smaller picks me that are just like doing tons of damage and right now at the end of the clip you can see him you can see him level 3 with half HP using his potions he already has a, he has a stack left he has 8 farm 2 minute 18 guys you have double buff at 2 minute 18 you're so in advance so right now Joko has two solutions. He can go top lane. Unfortunately, Jax is pushing or being aggressive, but the top laner, the top laners are still level one. This is the this is the thing that is crazy with that. The top laner are still level one. Like there's not there's, it, this is insane. Honestly, this is insane, guys. Like solo laners are level two, except Nuke Duck and Trick is level two. Bot laners are level one, and he's here level three. So he has two two choice. I think that he was gonna go mid because obviously. Top is pushing, but bot can clearly um, can clearly be done. I, f I feel like because Syndra is level two, it means that she got more minions uh, killed, so it's gonna push towards uh, Vitaly side. So the question is here. Okay, so now that we saw that, is can you guys do this in solo queue? Can you guys do this with your teammates and stuff? My answer is you shouldn't do it, just because this requires a lot of practice and it cannot be failed otherwise like it would just the the risk is too big and if you don't practice you'll never get really like a grasp of what can happen and what how bad things can get because understand that if still back and vendor were too low hp to go back in lane they would have been dominated so hard with various poke and brum zoning they would have done nothing special in lane and they would have probably regret it in solo queue we don't have the same coordination between teammates between uh, lane lane mates so if you have a support or an ADC with you so it's rather not a good choice to do it but if you guys are a team and like you have like a challenger team or a diamond team or even like a like even a even a silver or gold or platinum team to be honest you can try this in screams or just in practice when you go f uh, on flex mode or rank at fives you can just try it like try it out try if you can get a combo with maokai and see if you can fit an alistair and a kalista uh within the comp and try it once make sure you know what the picks me is going to do in damage i've tried to see what vendor uh runes were like i've tried to actually see vendor which is a support player for vitality and actually Alistair is not even on his most played players, and I've tried to look at what his mastery uh, actually are, but he only, he only has one page. So I actually want to know if he does have special masteries. Uh, maybe, I don't know, I don't know, maybe he has like some kind of special stuff that lets him tank a little bit, maybe like Perseverance. Uh, I don't know. I don't. This is what I really wish I knew. And even his rune, he doesn't have a dedicated one for Alistair. But I'm guessing he's playing with uh, the ones I saw earlier. Yeah, the Brom too. I think this is one that he plays with as well, with some armor, with some armor. Sorry, with health, flat, 
and some health regen so that he can just tempo in a lane and being able to regen without like uh, like without just like taking taking a hit from taking damage from the blue buff. After that, understand that Braum level two, um, Alistair level two has a heal, so it's easier to regen and supports always has uh, two to three potions level ones. So it's not a huge problem, but it's just that you don't want to consume too much potion because obviously it gives you a disadvantage, and everything everything counts in the bot lane, uh, from the simplest last hit to the exp experience denying and all that stuff so vendor yeah look at his profile he's not an alistair player like he plays fuse early star uh, his build is not very it's always a bit different all the time he goes for the uh, ninth vow a lot of times he's going for a thornmail here interesting okay um and he wins a lot like he wins a lot with a. Uh, he went for okay. I, I I need to see who is against, but I feel like this is just a reaction to the enemy team uh, build or who is fed uh, against them and everything. So guys, Alistair is not a meta support I would say for now, but it's always a nice combo with uh, with Kalista. To be honest, it's a huge combo with the ultimate of Kalista with double bump with Alistair in team fight and just the peeling of Alistair in team fight is insane, especially when you have like Sejuani, Jarvan. Like, champions that will jump into your ADC, Alistair is so good, and it's just, like, it's a good support overall, but I still think that supports like, uh, Rakan, supports like, Thresh, Brum, are still, like, better fitted into the meta. Alistair is, Alistair players in Silicu tend to go all in and forget about the whole peeling to ADC thing, so it's not a pick that I will probably advise, but if you guys are a team again, Try this composition. Try this thing with the Maokai and try to get the first blood and try to capitalize on your advantage and try and try and try to master uh, the thing if you think that it's a it's a good thing. Again, guys, breaking patterns make you makes your enemy freak out because they're not used to seeing this. Uh, G2 doesn't know anything about what's going on right now and Jarvan is gonna see or Jarvan and Syndra is gonna see a Maokai double buff when they're gonna be level one or barely level two. So break patterns, guys, and make sure that if you're not high elo, you take time to think about strategies like that. Because this is how people build the meta. They try new things, they try to break the pattern, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it, it's always interesting to... It's always interesting to discover and just research for those type of things. I remember that in Season 1 or Season 2 of League of Legends, five years, six years ago... A team called Masco 5 that some of you guys may know if you guys are veterans of the game. They used to break patterns all the time. Like we used to see some Urgot uh, solo bot lane. Uh, I think they're the one that invented the... They're the one that invented the swap lane or something. And it just become the, the meta. Like uh, I think they played Urgot jungle as well. Like there was some insane stuff that Masco 5 did. It was five years ago. I don't really remember. But they were crushing their enemy because the enemy never knew what to expect. Like, what is coming to our face? Right now, we all, we kind of know that the jungle is coming top around 3, 3 minutes 30. So nothing is really surprising. But if you do those type of thing, if Maokai does this type of thing and then master it, if they get first blood every game, it can work like a... Like, it can, it can change the whole season for them. So yeah. This is just me showing you this move, guys. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want me to shoutcast or analyze any other moves, make sure you send in me uh, on Twitter, at Zonabra. See you for the next one, guys, tomorrow, same hour. Cheers. Okay, it's rap pack to my pulse flat. We keep it real, no false rap. I got four cards and they all black. Got four bras and they all that. We call that ballin'. Doing this is my calling. Flow is so appalling. My phone off and she calling. I'm like, yeah. What it do? Penthouse, man, what a view. Fall back as I'm coming through with my whole team. They coming too, that's real.